We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're coming to you live on the Plus, the number 737-7587. You see that we're talking about the child marriage bill. We also are going uh, live right now streaming video on um, Facebook at newschannel5.com. If you want to contact us there or at comments, Rick Beck there will bring me any comments you have. Darren Jernigan, Jernigan's with us this morning along with Jeff Yarbrough, the two sponsors in the House and the Senate of a bill to limit uh, child marriages uh, along those lines. Real quickly then, we just kind of laid out for you in the first segment why you came about this and what the bill's all about. What do you suspect are right now some of the objections um, in the legislature? Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll start with one. I think one of the objections is that there are a lot of people who have in their mind this is being used primarily to allow two young people, 16, 17 year old, uh, who are high school sweethearts, if you will, to get married. And I think a lot of us have grandparents or parents or even, I, I know there are members of the legislature themselves mm -hmm. who got married at a young age. And so I think they think of it as something that, that going backwards uh, sort of questions the legitimacy of that. And I don't think anything could be further from the truth because the reality, that's not how this law is used today. Uh, fewer than, prob way less than 10% of these are actually minors marrying minors. The mm -hmm. vast majority of these are, child marriages are an underage person being married to an adult. And I think that's the, the significant problem here. Okay. So I hear about parental rights, the government stepping in. Just another reach, yeah. That isn't being, I can make decisions for my child and the government steps in and and that, and that my grandparents married early, both sets. My wife's grandparents married early. It was a different time. It was a different culture. It was back when a woman, they couldn't get a credit card. They couldn't get a loan. They couldn't go strike out on their own, get started a business, whatever it is. They didn't get the right to vote to the turn of the century. So, uh, it, they would hook up and and get a husband, sure. you know, and to, 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 but that's a different time and place. It's not the way it was, and and now these young uh, uh, women are very independent, and forthright, and a father, uh, especially if there's a pregnancy involved, I get that one too. That there's no nothing keeps the father from uh, determining parental rights and. Mm -hmm. And, and giving insurance and, and being supporting involved and, with the child, and right. being involved with the, yep. yeah, absolutely, and, and it's no harm in waiting till you're 18. Mm -hmm. What's the harm in it? That's, that's and the big I, big point then from your perspective is that by having this on the books, it does protect against what I guess you would call some of the more egregious cases, and I guess you say they happen where there's not not someone 21 even, but someone maybe in their late 20s, 30s, 40s marrying someone under age, and usually it's a man with a, a child. I mean there was a there's a criminal case out of Kentucky. And Kentucky has a law working its way but through, right? What happened in that passed. they passed a law with the support of their Kentucky Family Foundation, which is the analog to the Family Action Council here. So this is supported by a broad range in the in the community. But this Kentucky case that I'm talking about was a mother and a 47-year-old man brought a 14-year-old across state lines into Tennessee and took advantage of our law to marry the 14 year old girl to her 47 year old rapist. So those are, that's sort of the Anyone the worst who thinks case that's scenario. okay is sick. Period. Period. All right, let's take some phone calls. I mean, it's not okay. All right, if that's you, you're not okay. Let's go to Jimmy. Jimmy, good morning. Hi, Jimmy. Hello, how are you doing, Nick? Good, what's on your mind? I was going to say about this law, I know when I was young, I got an aunt and uncle that's been married for 50 years. She was 14 when she got married to him. How, how old you was know, he? How many other people? How old know, was he? He was just in his, I don't know, early 20s maybe. Okay. You know, like 20, 21 years old at the time. They've been married for 50 years. How many of y'all have not dated a girl or been with a girl that is five, six, seven, eight years younger than you? Yeah, I mean, well, hey, man, I guess... I, I yeah, agree now. Yeah. I mean, a 10-year-old should not marry a 43-year-old or a 14-year-old should not because that is getting kind of weird there. But basically, somebody is just 
you know, 19, 20, 21, getting married that young, isn't that bad or shouldn't be bothered with. You're sticking your nose too much into people's affairs. Well, I mean, the, the government steps in, in a lot of cases, with good reason. And there's a lot of things it protects us from. So you have to pick and choose. But how do you respond to what? So, and, yeah. So one thing. We wouldn't let two 14-year-olds get married under our law right now on their own decision. We wouldn't let two 16-year-olds or two 17-year-olds. Children don't have that right in Tennessee. We give that right to their parents. And make, letting parents make a lifelong decision for a kid I don't think is, is the right way to go. And I understand uh, the gentleman was talking about his aunt getting married 50 years ago uh, at age 14. Well, 50 years ago, we didn't have no-fault divorce laws in Tennessee. We didn't have the same domestic violence laws we had. It would be almost impossible for a woman to get a bank account or take out a loan or own property in her own name. And so uh, the, the, the legal differences weren't quite as stark as they are today, but when we let children marry adults right now, we put them in a situation where they are prone to be the subject of abuse and can't seek out assistance. So if a 16 year old gets married to a 22 year old who abuses her, she can't run away. If, they're a run, if a juvenile on the streets is a status violation, it's illegal. A domestic violence shelter can't take that girl in. A, she can't hire a lawyer under a binding contract to go seek an order of protection or to get a divorce if the marriage goes bad. And that, I don't think, is, is appropriate. And that's where we uh, you know, live in frankly, a different world than we did 50 years ago as a matter of law, and we're not let, women who are being married under this law are not being protected by the law. So 14's too young. The, there's a reason why the state says, look, you, you've got, you have to go to school. You're mandated to have an education until you're 18. There's a reason we have child labor laws, because they want to protect the child to go to school. These are instances where, and, and in 14, your childhood is gone. The reason that we moved to, to giving free elementary and secondary education uh, was, was simply because it was uh, that age to, to start a family, run a household mm -hmm. at 14, that's just, that's not, wasn't in the best interest of these children. So this just goes along with, with what we were saying of, of um, of having the child be able to have one and then graduate high school. Mm -hmm. That's what she should be focusing on, the prom and, 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 and dating and, and living a lot, not marrying someone uh, when you're 14 years old. Because, and, and the callers, right? I had girlfriends in high school that mm -hmm. I, I, oh Lord, I thank God I didn't marry them. But this, uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, uh, I wasn't mature enough. Right. I'm just not there yet. My brain won't be developed until we're 25. Uh, that a science shows that. Yeah. And so it's just to me, uh, they can wait till they're 18. Yeah. And I heard him talking about the age difference and the difference in age once everyone's an adult. I don't care. We see it all the time. We see someone in their 50s maybe marrying a 30 year old, and that's fine. It's a different ball game, I think, uh, Jimmy, when you are talking about someone who's under legal age to do a lot of things. Let's go to Ann. Hi, Ann. Good morning. Good morning. Um, there's a gray area with 16 to 18 year olds because we live in a time when they can be emancipated. But bottom line, under 16, no one should be getting married, either sex. And those judges or mayors should be looked at. My question is, of the 2,000 marriages that have occurred in Tennessee, I know we live in a time where we're looking at many minorities living in our country. How many of those were of the nationality that had arranged marriages? Because I know I worked with students, and those mm. students had parents that were still trying to arrange marriages. And that's what scares me. How many of our young females still live in a society where their parents are trying to arrange marriages with adult males? And we have bills 
laws that would allow that. And those are the laws that need to be taken off our books. And we need bills passed that protect them because we have none. I've worked with those teenagers and I know there is nothing on the books that protects them anywhere in the state of Tennessee. All right, thank you. Um, interesting points that she makes. Is there a component there? You know, there, there's other cultures that have moved to this country, and I don't know culturally about child marriages elsewhere. But does that play a role here? Uh, you know, I don't have, I don't have, I don't think the data that we have uh, breaks it down like mm -hmm. that. But unquestionably, this law, the one that Representative Jerning and I are proposing, uh, would put an end to any arranged marriages for those who are under 18 and we think that's a good thing. Uh, there's no question but we have people from other cultures that have come that, that, that still have, have some uh, arranged marriages from their native cultures. We also have people in Tennessee that have been here for generations where it's indigenous to the culture to, for people to, to marry young it, it inside a you know, particular community. And I, I think that this legislation would put a stop to, to any of those. Mm -hmm. So there are cult cultural differences uh, <coughs> to the caller. I, I, I read, I've read, I read so many cases. Uh, it's, it's not reading you really want to do on the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one case that uh, a, a child known a man for 45 minutes and uh, her father had thought that she lost her virginity and it was cultural and, and forced her to marry this person. But as far as uh, religious ceremonies, there's nothing to stop you from going down to the church and proclaiming with your, with your mate that we love each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we want to get married in front of friends and family and God. And, and, and when we turn 18, we'll, we'll let the state recognize it. We're 17, but there's nothing prohibitive from getting married. Well, that's interesting. So, meaning that your law, obviously, if it passes, will keep it so it's not, I guess, legal. But right. if someone wants to just go do this and then live together and the like, now, there are statutory rape laws and things like this that could come well, into sure, play. That's but right. And I think that's what, what we're saying is if, 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 a, if two people want to go in front of their family, their God, their mm -hmm. community, and proclaim that they want to live life together, then they can do so and they mm -hmm. can sign the marriage certificate when they turn 18 instead of five minutes after the, oh, the ceremony. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't allow the, fr right now what we do is we allow people to get married in a situation that would otherwise be statutory rape. That would otherwise be a sexual assault violation. And I don't think our marriage law should be used to immunize someone who is committing statutory rape. We've got to take a break on that note. When we come back, Sherry and other callers will get to you when we come back. The number is 737-7587. We're also streaming live on Facebook at newschannel5.com. More on the child marriage bill making its way through the legislature right after this. This is a storm.